Well, good morning. Welcome to Jesus Family Worship Center live this morning. Good morning, uh, family. A very warm welcome from our home to yours. We hope that you all are well and that you are blessed. And we just want to say that we miss all of you and can't wait to see you again. Well, welcome, family of Jesus Family Worship Center. Welcome to all our visitors, wherever you are joining in, tuning in this morning. I know we get reports. Um, I, uh, from people watching us and we just thank God that you are blessed by whatever we do this morning I know that we're not physically back in the building but we are soon to be there trusting God for the building of our church we're just praying for finances and uh, we're hoping that um, in February next year we can launch, relaunch Jesus Family Worship Center with a very different ethos um, and vision and we're just trusting God for the building so we'd love for you to uh, so it's our ministry, but we can chat with, to you about that later. But otherwise, welcome. We we love you. We miss you guys. And it's so good to have church this Sunday morning. Amen. 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 Well, let's pray. Father, we just come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Father, for all that you have provided for us this week. And God, we're just so grateful. Just grateful, Lord Jesus, for your love, your mercy, for safe traveling mercies, protection, peace, health, wealth. Lord, thank you, thank you. So, Father, we ask you, bless the service this morning. May we have a blessed, wonderful time in your presence this morning. And to God be all the praise, the glory, and the honor this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, everyone. It's going to be a great day. Come on, let's put our hands together right here.
chasing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how we need you. You stay the same. You are good in your way.
Amen. It's always good to be in the presence of the Lord. It's fantastic to lift up His name and worship Him. Amen. I hope that you've enjoyed the time together with us this morning. And uh, we just love you and we just trust God for great and mighty things in your life. As I said to you today is that we, I know I say this every single week, but I just want to remind you, uh, we're currently building our church. Uh, we're looking for, for about 5 million rands, 5.5 million rands. It seems ginormous and enormous, but with God, all things are possible. So we asking if you'd love to partner with us, love to help us to build this, this sanctuary, um, you know, whether you want to contribute towards the foundations, the building, whatever it is, we're happy to let you uh, have the plans and, and whatever we have. Uh, but we'd love for you to sow into our ministry and we thank you so much for those that have been sowing to God be the praise, the glory and the honor. So if you want to know how to give, simple, get onto our website www.jfwc.co.za and uh, once you into the website, you click on the tab that says share uh, giving and in there it's got all our details of how to give. We just trusting God for great and mighty things. Thank you for giving and God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you for your tithes. Thank you for your offerings and we're so grateful to God for that. And with that, Lisha will share a word with you right now. Okay, today I want to talk to you about what makes our offerings acceptable to God. I want to speak to you about the three W's. The first one is willingness. God seeks a voluntary yielding of our gifts. In 2 Corinthians 8 verse 12, it states that our offerings can be accepted if there is, a, if there is first a willing mind. Whether the willingness is our inward desire to give or simply our desire to obey God's call for us to give, each represents a willingness, each honors God and is honored by Him. Amen. The second W is worship. Sacrificial giving was, it was intended as a part of our worship, not as a separate act. Matthew 2 verses 10 and 11 illustrates it best. The wise men came to worship Jesus, and as a part of doing so, they opened their treasures to the Lord. The altar was intended as both a place of worship and sacrifice. The third W is worth. For our gifts to matter to God, they must first matter to us. In 1 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 24, King David declares, I will not sacrifice a burnt offering that costs me nothing. The Old Testament traditions or temple sacrifice required that the animal offered be an animal that the owner owned rather than a wild animal. The term sacrifice symbolized that the offerer gave up something, sacrificed something of worth to them. So today, even as we give, we know that what makes our offerings acceptable to God, willingness, worship, and worth. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Father God, I come before you in the name thank of you, your Jesus. Son, Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for every single person who is listening to this broadcast today. I pray, yes, Lord, Lord, that they would be blessed. I pray, Lord, for every single person now, even as they give towards this ministry. I pray, Lord, that you would yes, bless Father. them. Thank I pray, you, Lord, Jesus. that whatever needs they have, Lord, mm. that you would meet those needs in the name of Jesus. I pray for Jesus Family Worship Center, Lord, even as we are uh, busy with uh, building the church. I pray, Lord, that whatever funds we need, Lord, that it will be, prov be provided in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we just thank you today that you are our provider. Yes. We thank you that you meet our every need in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the best part of the service where we actually share the word of the Lord with you. Before we do that, I love to pray. So, won't you lift your hands wherever you are this, this morning and we're just going to look to the Lord and we're just going to commit this time to prayer and also pray for all the needs that are around us uh we need to pray let's pray father we come to you this morning in the precious and wonderful name of jesus and lord this morning the bible says we must pray without ceasing the bible says we must watch and pray and lord we know that even jesus when you were around the bible says early in the morning you would get up and you would pray and so today father we know that we can conquer through prayer we know, Lord Jesus, that even as the Bible says, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. And so I pray right now for every person that is listening to me right now, Lord. I pray that God, all of us has needs. Um, maybe it's spiritual, material, financial. I don't know today, Lord, healing, uh, deliverance. We want to pray for our buildings, uh, our businesses, whatever the needs are right now. I lift up every need to you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for every person now, Father, even as they listen to your word, that you bless them. Lord, that faith would, would arise, that faith would increase in us, Father, and that we would believe you for great and mighty things. So, Lord, bless your word right now, even as I speak it. Lord, I give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor 
In Jesus' name, I welcome you, sweet Holy Spirit, and I ask you, please help me, anoint me as I speak the word of the Lord this morning. And again, Father God, I'm so grateful, and I give you praise, glory, honor now, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning, I want to talk to you about, about prayer. And um, I, I was tossing around with, with the title of my sermon this morning, and so I, I, I spoke to both Nathan and Daniel, asking them, what should my title, my message this morning? It was either first pray or pray first. First pray or pray first. So it seems more appropriate right now to say pray first. In other words, in everything that we go through in life, whatever challenges, Whatever decisions we need as a child of God, the first thing that we need to do, the greatest weapon that God has given us, and I don't even think it's a weapon, I think the greatest um, sort of um, the greatest benefit to a Christian, to a child of God, is that we can come before God and pray. We pray to God so we can get direction for guidance, for wisdom, and God works. I mean, I can tell you how many times I've prayed and the Lord Jesus Christ came through for me. So let's get into the Word of God, and I want to just show you today, so why pray first? Pray first. And the reason why so many people this morning don't want to pray is, I really believe, is that we don't know how to pray. And I think many of us, we come to a point where we want to pray, we love to pray, but we go into our closets or we go into our room and you close the door and then you realize, but what do I pray? You prayed for your mother, you prayed for your father, you prayed for your granny, you prayed for the dog, you prayed for the cat, you prayed for the house, and then what happens? So I think the biggest challenge we have today is that people and we don't know how to pray and so I pray by the grace of God that today I teach you how to pray and that therefore in every situation that we will pray first if I look at my life in my personal life every single thing that I achieve today has been because of prayer my wife that I that Alicia who, who, who I, I mean I married over 21 years ago and met her over 23 years ago it was really through prayer. I was waiting upon God. I was hurt. I was I was depressed. I was discouraged. I went out with other girls or other ladies at that time, and it never worked out. But by but and 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 before I did that, I never prayed. But when I prayed and consulted God, God came through for me. Even in the house that you see us where we right now. 20 years ago, we bought this house, and that too was birthed out of prayer. Lisha and I prayed, we trusted in God, and even at that time, the interest rates was like 24%. Both of us being professional people, we couldn't even raise the bond to buy this house. But by supernatural means and intervention and praying and calling unto God, God gave us this house. In fact, it was a fantastic testimony. I'll never forget that. At that point in time, uh, we came, we looked at throughout the entire Westville for the house and we couldn't find the suitable house. And uh, eventually I saw this house and I really loved it. And I brought Leisha and immediately she walks in and says, this is the home. And uh, so we were very excited and we were about to sign the offer to purchase. Then the owner said to me, but we didn't settle on the price. When he told me the price, I, before that, I was actually driving to this house. And as I was praying and, and, and saying, God, I, I saw so many houses and I don't know what to do. But as I began to pray, God gave me a figure. And so when I came to sign the deal, the guy says, okay, so what are, what are we going to settle on? And I told him what I'm giving him. He laughed at me. He said, you know what, sir, just get out. You, um, no ways would I sell this house to you. I was, deep, I was very discouraged, but I wanted to obey God. I went home and I told Lisha and she was absolutely upset with me. And so we didn't hear from them. They said to us they had so many buyers and no ways uh, would they settle on that price. Um, they would definitely have a buyer. I said, well... If this house is for us, I prayed about it, I committed to God, and that was it. About three weeks later, I get a phone call the day before, and the lady said, well, I mean, the husband didn't want to talk to me anymore, but the lady said, the wife says to me, listen, are you still interested in the house? And I said, yes. And then she gave me a price a little bit higher than what the Lord said to me. And I said, no. I said, that is the price that God has given me, and that is what I'm believing for. Well, she says, well... I'm going to speak to my husband and tomorrow I'll let you know. That morning I got up. I began to spend time in the presence of the Lord. And I just started to pray and pray. And I said, Father, if this is your will, before lunchtime today, 
God, I pray that they will come forward and they will accept the price. And to just tell you that, that is exactly what happened. Uh, just before lunch, he called and said, well, uh, we settled on it. You can have the house for that amount. But the fact was, it wasn't about me trying to be clever. It wasn't about me trying to um, kind of uh, bring them down. You know, people say that Indian people are very good uh, negotiators. It wasn't that. I believed. I prayed about it. The Lord put a figure into my heart. And that is what I offered. And this is where we're staying. We're here like 20 years now. And so I want to thank God and tell you that everything in my life, even being a civil engineer, that was through prayer. Opening this church. Jesus Family Worship Center was birthed in church. I mean, was birthed in prayer. And we will continue to be a church that loves to pray. Amen. So getting into the word of the Lord, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, it says, And when Jesus had sent the disciples away, Jesus went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening had come, Jesus was all alone there. And so we can see when Jesus was on planet earth, Jesus prayed often. In fact, the Bible says in Mark chapter 6, verse 46, And when he had sent them away, Jesus departed to the mountain to pray. And then Mark chapter 5, verse 16 says, So he himself, Jesus, often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. So Jesus that we follow today, Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And we all aspire to be like Jesus. The Bible says that every day he would get up early and he would pray. Even before the sun came up, Jesus would pray. Imagine Jesus being the Son of God, yet also the Son of Man. Jesus' entire ministry was based on prayer. So how much more today prayer should be part of our daily lives? I love what John Wesley said, and I quote, he said this, it says, It seems God is limited by our prayer life, that he can do nothing for humanity, uh, humanity unless someone asked him and you know the, as i said to you jesus prayed first how much more we should be praying before we do anything and that's why i titled the message first pray first pray before buying the house before getting married before making that business deal before accepting that job before quitting your job i don't know whatever even myself, I mean, um, I remember writing exams and we're coming towards that right now. And I used to pray, but the reality too, I can pray, but there's also works that I've got to do. Amen. So sometimes I wasn't excited about the mark, but the fact is I prayed, God helped me. But also God was saying to me, Robin, faith without works is dead. So we can pray about a lot of things, but you got to have your heart right and you got to do your part as well. So every part of our lives must and should be built on prayer. The church, I believe the church should be built on prayer. Prayer moves the hand of God. And the Bible says that we are commanded. In fact, in the Bible, we are commanded to pray without ceasing. And I love what um, Dr. Miles Monroe said. Um, and I think many of us have used his quote. And he says, prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. What a wonderful, powerful word. Prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. So I believe today a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. A prayerless church is a powerless church. And the today South Africa needs us to be powerful. And the only way we can be powerful, even as a church, if we begin to pray. But I believe this morning the greatest challenge is how to pray. Many of us ask the question, how? I love to pray, but I mean, I don't know what to pray about. I pray the same things every day and I'm getting so bored with that. So the question is, how do I pray? And I believe today many, many people are struggling. Even my children, we, we have devotions every single day and uh, I ask them to pray. And I find that they say the same prayer almost every single day. And the reality is that we don't know how to pray. And because we don't know how to pray, we don't enjoy praying and therefore it becomes a real struggle. So the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, it says, rejoice always. And then verse 17, pray without ceasing. 
And then it says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So in other words, verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean that every minute, every part, every moment of your life, you should be praying. No, God is really saying that we should pray first. First pray. Whatever you're doing, whatever you need, just pray. Pray about it when you jump in your car. Pray about it when you're going to work. Pray about it before you go into a meeting. Whatever. You know, I've been doing that very often. I sit in meetings and I've learned this year uh, about the word wait. W-A-I-T. And I say to myself, what does wait mean? So I've learned even in meetings like, why am I talking? And so that has been my motto. So I sit in meetings and, and I listen to what's going on. And then I kind of think to myself, why am I talking? That's number one. And then I realize the second thing is that if I want to talk and if I want to say something, I always pray. I say, Father, under my breath, while I'm still, my eyes are open and listening, I say, Lord, I pray right now. Help me, Jesus. God, I don't know what to say, but I pray that what I'm going to say is right. And I do that. And many, many times, by God's grace, I'm able to solve the problem. I'm able to give wisdom. I'm able to give direction. And so it's so important that we pray first. Amen. I've learned even to become savvy with my money. And I know I love books and I go to Kum and I go to exclusive books. And many times I buy books, I read the first chapter and I leave it on my table or it's in my shelf. And now I go to the, to, to the shop and I say, God, Lord, Please help me, Father. Should I buy this book or not? I will take it. I put it back. I take it. I put it back. And eventually I just feel that God doesn't want me to have it. And I put it back. And I believe that is why. Because we pray first. So in every situation, God is saying pray first. So prayer should be our first response. Not our last resort. Amen. I'd like to say that again. Prayer should be our first response. Not our last resort. But unfortunately, many of us today... Prayer is always our last resort. So we, we got to act first and then pray. That's what we believe in. But I believe it's the other way around. Let's pray before we act in Jesus' name. So the question again is, how should I pray? How should I pray? Right now, if you think about our world, our world is in turmoil. Our world is in chaos. There is so much of moral decline corruption i mean i don't know it's like every form of bad words i think we've learned right now even living in south africa because of where we are and so i pray right now that in the name of jesus that god will give us direction that god will help us to understand that how should we pray so you see the bible says in second chronicles Chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. And during COVID-19, during the pandemic, every one of us quoted this word. And the Bible says in verse 13 of Second Chronicles chapter 7, it says, When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or, sends, or send pestilence among my people. So right now, when you look at the pestilence, what's going on? So God says this, there, there is issues in our, in our country right now. There are issues in our world today. But then he says in verse 17, it's like almost a condition. He says, but if my people were called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal the land. So what God is saying, that nothing's going to change on the planet Nothing's going to change on planet Earth. Nothing's going to change in our, in our areas, in our homes, in our lives, if we do not pray first. South Africa needs you right now. Not only South Africa needs you, our world needs you right now because the Bible says nothing's going to change if you and I don't pray. Amen. And then we say, we see that, so we have a role in what's going on in society today. And God is saying we've got to pray first. So how then to pray? Interesting, the Bible says in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says that the disciples were with Jesus. And verse number 1 says, Now it came to pass, as Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he stopped praying, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. You see, we've learned that before that, if you look at the Hebrew nation, if you look at the Jewish people, they memorized prayer. Everything was memorized, memorized, and they would, they would just recite a prayer. But suddenly they saw Jesus, 
And they saw Jesus wasn't reciting prayers, but Jesus was pray, praying in a certain way. And that's when he came to say, no, Lord, we cannot be reciting these prayers anymore. We want to pray just like how you prayed. And then Jesus like, and Jesus responds by sharing the Lord's Prayer. Unfortunately, we've taken the Lord's Prayer and we recite it. But I don't think that is right. Because Jesus was saying this in Matthew 6, 9 to 13 says, he said, in this manner, if you look at the word manner, it means in this method, in this outline, this is the way you should pray. He says, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now what Jesus was saying, Jesus was teaching them how to pray. He was not teaching them how to recite the prayer, but he said, listen, in this manner, in this outline, this is how you should be praying. And out of that, this morning, I'm going to show you seven topics that Jesus shows out of the prayer how we should be praying. So, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, if you read the first statement, he says, our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. So the first topic I believe is our Father in heaven. What is Jesus saying? He says, you got to connect with God relationally. He's not saying to pray the same prayer, but he's saying the first thing that we got to do when you come to prayer, I got to connect with God relationally. In other words, I got to see God as my heavenly Father. I've got to call him Father. I've got to, and, I mean, you see, when, when, when we call God Father, he loves it. He loves it to be called Father. I mean, even in the natural I love it when my sons call me dad. Some of them now, as we get older, they call you old man. Uh, they call you Bob. They call you all funny things. But the fact of the matter is that when, when they call you dad, when they call you daddy or my father, it makes you so proud. You see, God wasn't, doesn't want us to see him as a judge, an old man with a long white hair and with wrinkles in his face, with a stick in his hand, ready to whack you when you do wrong. No, God wants us to see him as our father. So when I come before him, I mean, you know, it's like when my dad was around, I, I used to love it. We used to watch soccer a lot. He used to support that other team called Arsenal and I support Tottenham. But I remember sitting with my dad. And just sitting there, I would feel so comfortable with dad that I would just express and I would just tell him whatever I feel because I feel connected with him. He's my father. And this is what God is saying. We've got to connect with him relationally. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 15, it says, For you do not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cried out, cry out, Abba, Father. You see, Jesus is saying the first thing is that when you come to pray, come in before him and see him as your father, see him as your provider, see him as your protector. Just see him as your heavenly father. The second thing he says there, Matthew 6 verse 9 says, Hallowed be your name. So what is Jesus saying here? He says, now that you know him as father, we got to worship his name. I got to just worship his name because Jesus said, I got to begin to worship his name. And, and, and what are the names of God? When you think about the names of God before that, if you look at a name a name has power, you know, when, when I look at work and, and I try as a manager to, to manage my staff and I would tell them the same thing over and over and over. And I would ask them basically for a report or for a design and I keep asking it. But then I realized that sometimes I have to say, Hey, you know what guys, Tommy, my head, the head of my department or, or the head of our unit is Tommy. And Tommy asked for this. And the reality is that nine out of ten times I will get that, 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 that um, report. I would get that plan immediately because why? There's power in the head's name. And so likewise today, when you have the name of God, we have power in it today. So what are some of the names of God? And I'm not going to go into the Hebrew names. You can know it. The, one of the names is that he, his name is righteousness. That the Bible says that, that his name is righteous. I mean, I can come before God, even though I'm a sinner, I can have a right standing with God. His name is healer. He's your healer right now. He's Jehovah Rapha. He can heal you of your diseases right now in the name of Jesus. His name is shepherd. Ah, oh, I love it. Shepherds lead sheep. And then he's my provider. 
He's my sanctifier. His name means sanctifier. His name means banner of victory. His name means peace right now in a storm. And his name means there. God is just there because the Bible says, I am that I am. What shall your name be? I am that I am. In other words, what do you want him to be right now? That is what it is. And he's there all the time. Amen. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. So the first thing when I come before him, I acknowledge him as father. I begin to love him. The second thing is I worship his name. And then Jesus says the third thing that we do. In verse 10 it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does it say? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. In other words, God is saying that Jesus says we pray God's agenda. So what is God's agenda? God's agenda is about others. It's about us not only praying about us, but praying about other people. God's concerned about the world. God's concerned about Iran and Iraq and what's going on. God's concerned about the persecuted church. God is concerned about the turmoil in America right now in terms of the elections. God is concerned about the persecuted church and the underground church. And God is concerned about what is going around. And God is saying you can't be selfish but you gotta pray pray for other people today and there's so many needs that you can pray for pray for the church pray for the family I mean you can just take a morning and just begin to pray God's agenda and I promise you you can pray and you can pray and you can pray about a whole lot of things that's why the Bible says in John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life you see then the Bible says in Matthew 6 33 but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you and Luke 12 31 says exactly the same thing but seek the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you so we gotta pray pray for the president pray for our country number four he says to us in verse 11 give us this day our daily bread what does that mean it means that God I depend on you for every single thing everything I depend on you so when I come before God in the morning I act as if I have nothing and I say, God, I need you today. I need my daily bread. I need my sus sustenance. I need peace. I need joy. Lord, help me. We ask God, God ask, we ask God to bless the church, bless our family, provide finances because I begin to show God that God, I'm dependent on you for everything. God, I'm dependent on you to be a better husband. I'm dependent on you to be a better uh, uh, son. I'm depending on you to be a better father. Whatever it is, God, I depend upon you today. That's why Psalm 121 verse 1 to 2 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. What it means is in those days, the authority of people sat in high places. And so the psalmist David is saying, I'm not looking to them. I'm not looking to government, but I'm looking to you, Father, as my source. Even right now with everything happening, recession, uh, a downturn in the economy and whatever is happening today, I am looking to God as my source. That's why I pray first. And then number five, it says in Matthew 6, 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. What it means then, God, he says, get your heart right with yourself and get your heart right with others. So in other words, that we, do, you know, I pray every morning, I'm praying, God, may I not be desensitized to sin. Because sometimes we don't even know what's right, what's wrong. But I pray in the morning and say, God, the first thing is that every morning I say, God, please forgive me, Lord. Please wash me, cleanse me in the blood of Jesus. Lord, I bring my mind before you, Father. And I pray for a renewed mind in the name of Jesus. I pray about me. I pray against the spirit of, 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 of pride. The Bible says God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. And I say, God, I don't want to be prideful. But then the thing is, next thing is God is also saying that not only do I pray about me and get my heart right before God, I got to pray about others. Father, have I, have I hurt people? And I pray for my enemies. I pray for those who persecute me. Amen. We got to do that every day. That's what the Bible says in 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I forgive in advance. Number six. Matthew 6, 13 says, And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. What it means here, 
you got to engage in spiritual warfare. One of the things you got to understand, we fight an enemy. You fight the devil. The devil's against you. The devil doesn't love you. The devil comes against you. and Throughout your day, he comes. But we pray and say, God, I ask you today, Lord, don't lead me into temptation. God, help me make good decisions today, Father. Help me, Lord. Protect me that, God, I'm going to do the right thing today. Amen. So we basically engage in spiritual warfare. I believe this. If you're not fighting the devil every day, then it means that the devil's fighting harder against you. The devil's fighting harder against you. Come on. You got to see him come against you and you got to take authority in the name of Jesus. That's why Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And I believe right now, the most important thing right now with the spiritual warfare, you got to pray for your family. You got to pray for your spouse. You got to pray for your children. You got to pray for your home today. That's why Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 14 says, And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders and to the rest of the people, Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome. And then he says, Fight and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. God is saying today, you got to fight for your family. And number seven, my last one is, the Bible says in, 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 in uh, Matthew 6, 13 says, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. What it says, it means that I express, now imagine, I started off with that. For yours is the kingdom. And I'm ending with this means that I express faith in God's ability. I'm saying, God, today I can do nothing without you. Father, everything that I need is about you. God, you are the be all and the end all in my life. Amen. And therefore we express our faith in God's ability. You are saying, God, you are well able to do it for me. I love the scripture, Jeremiah 20, uh, 32 verse 17. This was my favorite scripture when I was born again. And it says here, Verse 32, verse 17 in Jeremiah says, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There's nothing, nothing too hard for you. God, there's nothing too hard for you in this day. Amen. And then end the scripture, end, end your prayers with the scripture. Revelation chapter 5, verse 13 says, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Church, this morning, I want to tell you, that's the seven topics. I pray this morning before you engage in anything that you will pray first. And when we can do that, God will come through for you. Amen. Won't you bow your heads with me right now? Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that even as you want us to pray, I pray that this word has fallen on good ground today. That Lord, you're teaching us how to pray, that prayer does not become a struggle in the name of Jesus. But before that, if you are not born again today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, well, I'm just going to give you a, a, an opportunity right now. If God has been speaking to you right now and you don't know him, the Bible says so simple. I've got to believe that I'm a sinner and I need a savior. And the savior that we have today, his name is Jesus. So all I got to do this morning is believe in my heart that Jesus died and rose again and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. If you do that right now, believe in him, confess with your mouth. The Bible says you will be saved. So if you are that person right now, then I ask you to please pray this prayer with me in the name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in Jesus' name. I believe I'm a sinner and I need a Savior today. But I believe, Jesus, you died on the cross. You shed your blood and through your blood, my sins are washed away. I confess my sins. And Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord in Jesus' name. Lord, come into my heart. Help me, lead me, guide me in Jesus' name. Well, if you pray that prayer, 
We love to hear from you. Won't you connect with us? And we would love to be your family and love to help you in the name of Jesus. Amen. For the rest of you, won't you just bow your heads as I pray over you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today for your word. I pray that even as we go and live our lives, that Lord, you would help us today that we will pray first in everything that we do, even as we learn today how to pray. So teach us, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, I pray the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and joy and health, wealth, favor, strength, mercy and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Lisa and I love you. Thank you so much for connecting with us. We'll speak to you again next week. God bless you.